Hi, everybody. Welcome to our essay analysis for Duke Fuqua. My name is Liza Wheel, and I'm a senior consultant here with MBA Mission, and I'm ready to dissect these essays for you. So let's jump right in. Okay, first, we're going to talk about Duke's 25 random things about yourself. This is one of my favorite essay questions that is out there, um, and I think, uh, I think you'll really enjoy the process of actually coming up with it, although I know it can be daunting uh, when you first hear about it. Okay, so let me read what Fuqua says about this. Fuqua believes different types of people, points of view, and experiences bring out the best in everyone. And above all, we place a premium on succeeding while making a positive impact on businesses, organizations, and the world. These ways of thinking set the Duke MBA experience apart. Learning these 25 random things helps us to get to know someone's personality, background, special talents, and more. In this spirit, the admissions committee also wants to get to know you beyond the professional and academic achievements listed in your resume and the transcript. You can share with us important life experiences, your likes, dislikes, hobbies, achievements, fun facts, or anything else that helps us understand what makes you who you are. Share with us your list of 25 random things about you. So this is a 25 random things, guys. So uh, you might already be coming up with some ideas of what to put into your list. I wanna give you some advice to remember. Number one, this might sound obvious, but brainstorm. Um, it's very tempting, you, you might um, think you know what you're supposed to put in there and get a list of like these 10 things and then 20 things that sound right. But I really encourage you to A, not ever wonder what you, you're supposed to write and B, take a step back and really brainstorm. I think you can have a lot of fun with this. Um, a few of the tips that I give my clients are, Number one, you know, maybe like sit in a different room or a different spot that you spend time on. So if you're in an apartment at night and you're in office um, by day, uh, maybe you go to the park uh, during the weekend, give yourself some time in each of these environments to look around the room, figure out what's there. Maybe there are little trinkets or mementos that are meaningful to you and might be one of your 25 random things. Or maybe they actually, there's a, um, an award that you're proud of and that you want to tell a story about. But by mixing up your environment where you are, you're more likely to get lots of different random things out uh, about you as opposed to just sitting in one place and brainstorming for 30 minutes. That's number one. The other thing I want you to do is think about different stages in your life. Um, so think about when you were young, when you were in your uh, high school days, when you were in college, when you're professional. Uh, you could also think about it as fun versus serious. You could also think about the different people in your life. So really invest in brainstorming. Um, you know, it, the next bullet says this is really important. Every single bullet should give, a, or bullet or fact um, or thing, um, should give a different window into who you are. Uh, that's why this brainstorming is so essential because you don't want to just list 25 likes and dislikes. That gets kind of boring, right? Uh, maybe you, ha you have one like, but maybe there is this random hobby that you were really good at as a, as a child. Maybe that one's one of them. So each one of the, the random things is going to be something different, something new about you. Okay. Um, and that's really important. And you also really want to think about, this is jumping a little bit to the last bullet, think about what um, the, uh, your things, what the, your things are telling the school. Um, that's important. Um, and own your statements. What do I mean by this? Um, owning your statements. So let's say you have a dog named Apollo. Okay. You could just say, oh, I named, I have a dog named Apollo. Well, that's, Okay, that's interesting. You have a dog, and the dog's name Apollo, but we might not really be telling the schools quite enough about you there. And I don't know, do we, it, it, it's really all that unique. I mean, sure, it's a unique name, but again, what do we learn about you? But can you imagine a random thing such as, I named my dog Apollo. Um, I was completely fanatic, a uh, complete fanatic about all things Greek mythology growing up um, and just really loved learning about all the different heroes. So when it came for, uh, when my parents gave me the choice to name the dog's name, it was Apollo and he's been my best friend ever since. Too wordy, but my point is this, give them a little bit more than just p potentially the fact. Um, help them understand why it's important and why we need to know that to understand who you are. Okay? Have fun with this essay question. It's a lot of fun. Enjoy it. All right.
Then we're going to move on to essay number two. This is a little bit more um, standard in nature. Um, I, I do feel like the 25 random things is one of the most unique out there. This question is still a little different, um, but it's more standard, more comparable to other business school essay questions. So here we go. This one is all about the Fuqua community and you. And there's no more than, both for this and the other one, no more than two pages. Fuqua prides itself on cultivating a culture of engagement. Our students enjoy a wide range of student-led organizations that provide opportunities for leadership development and personal fulfillment, as well as an outlet for contributing to society. Our student-led government, clubs, centers, and events are an integral part of the student culture and are vital to providing you with a range of experiential learning and individual development exercises. Based on your understanding of the Fuqua culture, how do you see yourself engaging in and contributing to our community outside of the classroom? Okay, the first hint, I'm just gonna say it right on this page, is that you'll notice is outside of the classroom. Um, I, I'm gonna keep it in this slide for a second just to make this point. This doesn't mean you can't mention anything about academics, but it does mean if you're gonna be talking about really um, excelling in finance class because you have been in finance, you're sort of missing the boat on this one. You really want to think about how are you going above and beyond um, being a good student in the classroom, all right? So let's talk about some advice on this one. The first thing that in order to answer this question, you really do have to know a lot about Fuqua. It's going to be hard for you to imagine what you're going to be um, contributing to on campus, what clubs you'll be involved in, unless you know what those clubs are. So you want to spend your time, dig deep. Um, I'll, I'll mention this right now. If you haven't, go visit our website and download our Insider's Guide for Duke, um, uh, for Fuqua. That's going to be an essential resource. Um, visit uh, Fuqua's YouTube channel. Um, visit the website. Talk to current students. Really understand what happens, whether it's a marketing conference or whether it's a local net impact chapter, um, what some of their initiatives. Investigate so that you can really think about what you can do. Um, the other point I would make is include rationale. What do I mean by that? So let's say you want to get involved in the annual marketing conference. Okay, it's very easy. Anybody can say, I want to get involved in the marketing conference, right? But tell them why. Oh, remind them because your goal is to move into brand management. So you know through the marketing conference, you're going to be focused on inviting brands like uh, Crest and Colgate or Kraft Foods or any, you know, any big brand consumer product good or maybe Apple. You're going to be focused on inviting those players to the conference so you can learn more about how to build successful brands. Okay, now I get it. Now I know why I should believe that you're actually going to get involved in the marketing conference, right? Um, another way to do that for us to, to give the reader that, um, that sense of confidence that you're really going to do what you say you're going to do is show how it aligns with what you've done in the past. Um, you know, if you've organized a lot of events in the past but now want to do something new at Duke with a marketing conference, that could be a way to do it. Uh, while I've done, while I really enjoyed organizing this for um, the business, uh, the business club on campus in college, I want to reorient my energy towards this new industry I'm looking to get into, marketing. So we'll take an active role in the conference. All these examples are totally made up. You have to. The point is, you want to give the reader some, some, you know, reason to believe that you're going to say that you're, you'll do the things you say you're going to do. Um, and then go beyond simply saying, um, I'll get involved in this club and this project, right? Tell us what you're going to do. Be bold, be creative. That doesn't mean you're going to do, you have to do something that's so outlandish and different. But if you are fascinated or really interested in this specific industry and maybe there's not a lot of um, clubs focused on that or uh, a lot of uh, events focused on that industry, um, tell us that you are going to bring together certain leaders in that space, have some names, have some, have some things that you want to explore. Get really specific about where you think your value add is going to be, not just I'm going to be involved in this club. Imagine what it is and how that involvement will really manifest itself once you're on campus. No laundry list. I see this all the time. People feel like they should mention everything. They mention like 15 or 20 different things that they're going to get involved in. Um, chances are, just like your own lives right now, if you're involved in 20 different things, which you probably are, 
you're more involved in some of those things and less involved in others, whether it's part of your day job, what you're doing outside of work. Focus on the things that you're really going to invest in. The school does not need to hear about the 20 things that you might dabble in because you're, you think you might be interested in that or this or that and the other. Make it much, you know, focus on those things that really, really inspire you and excite you. Maybe there's three, four, five, six different things, certainly not 20. This isn't another 25 uh, random things, okay? This is much, um, you're going to go much deeper into uh, a smaller subset of the things that most interest you, okay? All right, guys, we're moving along. Next one. So in addition to those two core essays that Duke has, Duke does have a, a three short answer questions as part of its application. Um, and you only have about 500 characters to respond to these. Um, there are three of them. What are your short-term goals post-MBA? What are your long-term goals? Um, and the third one is kind of a, a little different. Life is full of uncertainties and plans and circumstances can change. As a result, navigating your career requi requires you to be adaptable. Should the short-term goals that you provided above not materialize, what alternative directions have you considered? I think this question is great, um, but we'll get to it in a second. Uh, let's talk about these. Okay, so these three things um, actually form part of what we typically refer to here at MBA Mission as the personal statement, your goal statement. So I wanna talk about those three questions. So the school asks you about your short-term goals. When you're thinking about your short-term goals, I really want you to start with what it is you want to do. Okay, that's what I mean by authentic. There's no right answer. You can have any answer you want, but really start with what, you, what it is you wanna do. The caveats I will give is it has to be, those goals have to be logical. They have to make sense based on where you've been. Um, they have to make sense based on what you've seen and what you've experienced. There has to be a reason why you want to get into that. It has to be credible. Um, so if you are looking to uh, make a move from operations management to consulting, you need to um, make sure that you know, you prove that you've had some client exposure, um, you know, that you've um, done some problem solving. That feels credible. But if it's such a drastic jump, if you are going from nonprofit right into private equity, that's not going to feel very credible necessarily, right? So um, I want those goals to be authentic and be true to you, but ask yourself, is this a reasonable jump? If not, you might need to come up with an even shorter short-term goal that will actually get you closer to your real goals, okay? All right, let's talk about the long-term goals. So your long-term goals should build on your short-term goals. Your short-term goals should lead to some long-term destination. Makes sense, right? Um, you're not going to go short-term, I want to go into consulting, and long-term, I want to, uh, I'm trying to think of it, move into investment banking, like two kind of random paths, different paths. Um, instead, you might say, I want to go into, I want to, um, become a consultant, long-term become a partner in specializing in this industry or this area. So they're the long-term goals, build off those short-term goals. Your, short, your long-term goals should be ambitious. You are going to, you're applying to do Fuqua, it's to change your life, it's going to be transformative. So you want to have ambitious, big goals. That doesn't mean you have to say you're gonna be the CEO of a company, unless that's what you wanna do. You, doesn't have to, you don't have to say you're gonna start your own company, unless, of course, that's what you wanna do. But it does have to feel like it's aspirational. It's big. Um, they also need to be logical, but they don't have to be exact. Look, it's hard to say what you're gonna be doing in the long term. They get that. But this, so you might have an either or or a maybe, something in this area. Still needs to be logical and make sense, but maybe if let's go with that consulting route again, like I'm going to go into consulting in short term um, and over time focus on the uh, consumer marketing space, consumer product space. In the long term, I either uh, hope to be a partner within a consulting firm to uh, continue to grow consumer products as a whole, or perhaps join a consumer products company as a chief strategist. There's an either or in the long term. That's okay. We still get a sense of the area that you're marching towards, okay? Um, so it does have to be logical. It doesn't have to be super specific. It can be, but don't worry if it's not. All right, let's talk about that last one, alternative directions. I think this is great that Duke asked this question because they're basically saying like, look, this is hard. Your first goal might not work. What's your backup plan? Um, and that's really what this um, question is asking for. Um, but there are things to keep in mind. This is, the way I want you to think about it is, if I, I know where I want to end up. 
if my short term um, goal doesn't materialize, what's a longer path I can take to still get there? Um, so it shouldn't be in a completely different direction. So again, if I want to be a consultant in consumer products in uh, the short and long term, I shouldn't say for my alternative direction, investment banking. It just doesn't make sense, right? Instead, think of another stopgap. Um, perhaps um, if consulting isn't going to materialize, you're going to look for a product marketing role right away within a consumer products company. Either one of those short-term goals can eventually help you get to that more senior position within a consumer products company. Um, so you just want to make sure that they are actually, it's, it's this alternative direction is still in line with your long-term goals. Um, it's more logical. It's more credible. All I mean by that, it's like more of a near term. Um, it's even an, uh, quote, easier potentially job to get than the short-term goal that um, is really your aspirations. And as I said, it should, um, it still helps you reach your ultimate goal. That's important. All right, guys, one more essay. And for most of you guys, you guys aren't even going to answer it. Uh, it's the optional essay. Tell us more. If you feel there are circumstances of which the admissions committee should be aware, such as unexplained gaps in work, choice of recommenders, inconsistent or questionable academic performance, please explain them in an optional essay. Please do not upload additional essays or additional recommendations in this area of ap the application and limit your response to one page. I appreciate that Duke here says, guys, don't upload additional essays, don't upload additional recommendations. Most people would understand that from the prompt, but a lot of people will still try to sneak one in. If you do, um, I think in the past, probably Duke's like, oh, they, they're just shooting themselves in the foot. So I appreciate that Duke is really being explicit and saying, don't do this, guys. Only do it if you feel there are circumstances that need to be explained. Okay? So here's my advice here. If there is an issue, if there's a gap in your work, if there's grades that were an issue, just be direct and explain it. Don't get defensive. Just clarify the situation for the school. If something could cause confusion, clear up the mystery. So again here, if there's something that they might, they not, might not understand from your application, don't hope that they will or don't hope that they won't catch the, the issue. Just again, clear up the mystery, own it. So then there's no issue and you don't have to wonder, oh my gosh, maybe they didn't understand that my boss actually was away on maternity leave for those two years and that's why I didn't ask her to write. Whatever it might be, you know, just uh, clear up the mystery. Um, if neither of the above apply, then look again at the prompt. In other words, you don't have to fill this out. Most people do not need to use this optional essay. Um, it is, again, not a reason to try to tell them a new essay or, you know, reuse an essay that you've used for another school. Uh -uh. Just looked at the prompt. Yep, let the prompt guide you and only really use this if you've got um, issues or something you need to clarify. All right. That's it on uh, Duke Fuqua's essays for 2018 to 2019. Um, as a reminder, I mentioned the Insider's Guide to Duke. Go to our website, uh, download it. Also, you might want to download our personal statement guide. That will help with those short uh, answer essay questions. And if you haven't, do sign up for a free consultation with one of us. Um, it's 30 minutes of our time uh, with you. You can use that time however you see fit. Uh, you know, sign up with me. I can help you start brainstorming for those 25 random things. I've had many clients say, I don't have, I'm not that interesting. I don't have 25 random things. Trust me, you do. And it's so fun when you actually start to see it come to life. So um, definitely take advantage of us. Reach out uh, to us if you want one of our free consultations or if you want uh, to partner with us on your journey uh, to business school. And in the meantime, I wish you guys all good luck and take care. Thanks.